Hello students, in this lecture me and Subbu sir, we are going to discuss how we can apply area under the graph that we have learned in the previous class in various concepts of physics. So let us first revise the basic concept of how area under the graph and integration were related. So in the previous lecture, Subbu sir has explained this in detail. Here I am just going to brief you about the same concept which you have learned in the previous class. Now, what is area under the graph? Let us say we have a function y is equal to fx. That is y is a function of x. So y is given as a function of x. Now I am plotting a graph between x and y here. Let us say the graph is given like this. Now if I am selecting a very small portion. Let us say this is x and this point represents x plus dx that is the x coordinate of this point is x and this point it is x plus dx now the value of function at this point is fx at this point it is fx plus dx now since we have taken dx a very small portion so the difference between fx and fx plus dx is also negligibly small so approximately i can consider this portion as a rectangle now you know the area of a rectangle. So in this case, this area, this small area, which I can write as dA is equal to this height that is fx into width that is dx. So using the area of a rectangle, I can get the area of this small portion. Now here I want to calculate area under this whole graph, that is this whole area. I want to calculate the area of this whole portion. So what we can do here? We can do, what we can do is, we can make each, in this region, we can make uh, various small portions. And we can calculate area of each portion. If we sum up the area of each of these portions, we will get this whole area under the graph. And the simplest method to add all these smaller area is just by integrating this function that is fx dx. So this integral of fx dx will give us area, the total area under this graph. If this point represent x coordinate as a, this point as b, if I integrate x from, if you can put the value of lower limit as a, upper limit of x as b, then we will get the whole area under this graph. This concept you have already learned in the previous lecture or if you have not gone through the, that lecture, you should revise that lecture first. Now here in this lecture, what we are doing is we are going to discuss application of this concept in various parts of physics. So first I am going to apply this concept in calculating momentum change when force as a function of time is given in a given condition. So, so let us, uh, I think that you are applying this concept in mechanics. Ha, the first I am going to take example from mechanics where okay. this concept can be applied and various questions in NEET and IIT entrance or sometime in board exam also are generally asked from this concept. So once you learn this concept, you can apply it everywhere in all the examination that you have to go through. So first, I am just going to give you a brief of how force is related with momentum change or impulse. Now you have already learned the second law of Newton's motion. The second law of motion. What is Newton's second law of motion? Newton's second law of motion simply states that external force that is F is equal to the rate of change of linear momentum. Now we can write F into dt as dP here. Now this term that is F into dt, this is called impulse. Then this force F is called impulsive force. So we can write this impulse as dj, here j is representing the impulse here. Now if I integrate this function, what we can get is integration of dp, that is integration of F into dt. Now if I plot a graph, where f is a function of time, that is force is varying with respect to time. Then I can plot force f on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So you can relate this with the previous concept that we have learned, that if it is y and it is x, then in 
इंटीग्रल ऑफ वाई इंटू डी एक्स विल गिव अस एरिया अंडर दैट गिवन ग्राफ इन सो इफ अ ग्राफ इज गिवेन बिटवीन फोर्स एंड टाइम देन एरिया अंडर फोर्स एंड टाइम ग्राफ विल गिव अस चेंज इन लीनियर मोमेंटम सो लीनियर मोमेंटम और चेंज इन मोमेंटम कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड यूजिंग द फोर्स वर्सेज टाइम ग्राफ यूजिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एरिया अंडर द ग्राफ हियर आई एम गोइंग टू टेक वन एग्जाम्पल लेटर से force is given which is varying like this and this is a case generally when a when two system strikes or there is a collision of one system with any other system during that collision an impulsive force has a nature similar to this first it increases to a maximum value and then it comes down to zero so now we can calculate the change in momentum between let us say this point as a and this point as b so we have to calculate the change in momentum here if this value of force is given and let us say this value t is 2 second here t is 4 second let us say this value of force is given as 4 newton so to calculate the change in momentum we just have to calculate this area and it is a very simple area to calculate here so the change in momentum delta p or final momentum minus initial momentum what is the value of this this is simply area under this graph and what is the value of area under this graph so it is half into this length that is 4 into this length that is again 4 this is kg meter per second that is change in momentum so the change in momentum in this case is simply 8 kg meter per second so you can see that using the concept of area under graph we can easily calculate change in momentum even when force is given as a function of time or force was variable so this is how area under the graph can be applied in various concept of physics here we are dealing with the some part of mechanics here now after this question you must have got an idea ki how we can use this concept to solve various problem of physics now just to give you more elaboration on this concept i am going to give one more question and this question was previously asked in entrance examination as well so before going through the solution of this question that i am going to give you solution you can think for one or two minute just by stopping this video so that you can apply the learned concept to get a how to solve question on these concepts so here let us say again force and time graph is given so on the y axis we have force f on the x axis we have time here now if a graph is given like this here let us say this time is given as t by 4 this is given as 3t by 4 this is 0 and this is t here this force the highest value is given as f not so this is a graph of force versus time in a case where one body of mass m is colliding with another identical body of mass m and the first body let us say this body has mass m and it was moving with speed u another body identical body of same mass was at rest initially now when this body will collide with this body what will happen is the second body will start moving with the speed of first body and the first body will come into rest this is the general concept of collision now here if i look at body 1 so the body 1 has initial momentum mu final momentum 0 so what is the change in linear momentum of body 1 so the linear momentum of body 1 changes by an amount m into u now what is this value in terms of force and time here so for that we have to calculate this whole area under force versus time graph here so i, mean, I think sir uh, we have already given them an example based uh, on the uh, change in the momentum yes in the first question i solved this earlier earlier now can we discuss this question in the next lecture its solution ha uh, and let them solve this question yes. first and then they will check with the uh, correct answer. solution yes, yes. that is a good idea so 
just applying the concept that you've learned in the previous example you can solve this question and here what you have to do is you have to calculate the value of f naught here time is given the momentum change i have already calculated just using this value you have to calculate the value of f naught in the second part of the area See. under the graph this thing uh, we will going to discuss for the solution of this question and then i will give solution of various other question important questions that you will come across in various other topics of physics other than mechanics so for this lecture goodbye from me and subhu sir in the next lecture we are going to give you some more exciting uh, concept of physics thank, thank you students, students.